Hey, how you doing? Welcome to Gaulty and the Gator. I'm Gaulty, she's the Gator. Because <laughs> I bite back. Yep, yep. Um, so, Aye, very good. today on our Blues and New show. Yeah, uh, so this is going to be a special one, eh? Mm-hmm. Um, so, this is a kind of spur of the moment show. Um, and it's because Jimmy Johnson has he's helped us a great deal by getting us a lot of music from Delmark and and connecting us with people. So um, we're going to do the show uh, as a testament to his career and how at 93 years old he's still um, delivering solid quality music to the modern blues scene. And I think that's incredible. Absolutely. So the first one that we've got for you today is a Jimmy Johnson song and it's um, Every Day of Your Life. I'm going to enjoy it, are you? Yep. You're going to dance in your chair? Yep. Cool. Take nothing to your grave 
awesome. There you go. That's actually the title track from his uh, from his album that um, got him massive, massive um, award in the Hall of Fame and whatnot. Twenty sixteen, he was inducted at the Hall of Fame, and then he's brought out this new album. That's amazing. And he's still been doing live streams. I know, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. Um, I'm pretty sure we've mentioned it before, but it it is definitely worth being mentioned again. The fact that uh, watching him doing his live stream and then they read out your message. I know, I I know, I know. I tell you, it was was, was brilliant. brilliant, eh? He's just great all together, actually. So he's got this... um, the, The reason... He's such a big deal, is because he does actually come from Mississippi. Mm-hmm. He came from that hardship. I mean, born in um, 1928, you know, the year of the TV, Mickey Mouse. Penicillin. You know, oh, was it? Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, was it? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, you're the invented penicillin. Oh, right, okay. I say well, invented penicillin, they yeah, found it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, somebody left a loaf of bread out and it went mouldy, and then, and then they were all right. And then right. the flu oh, went away. Anyway, no, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> they were like, oh, we're healthy. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, I. <laughs> So he's been around a long, long time, and he's seen a lot of stuff. Excuse me. Um, and you know, he, he's still he's still delivering like regularly at ninety three. I mean, I think that is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I can't see me making it to fifty. Never mind ninety three. Well, I don't know. It seems to be a thing with blues musicians. Uh, I suppose I. You know, uh, well, I'm banking on you being here for a long time. <laughs> I know, right, so I can take the bins out. <laughs> so we'll get Nathan for. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> true. Aye. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, but yeah, so he, he he grew up and he loved school, but he couldn't go very often. Yeah, because he was working. He eh? was work- he eight was years a, old. A far- yeah. yeah, a farmhand. Aye. Yep. I mean, it really, I mean, it's, it's guys like this that make you step back and think, wow, how actual, how easy is it? You know, aye, I know. for us, He's and you know. Still humble. <laughs> aye. He's like, I don't want to do this, so I'm not going to, and I'm just going to forge my way in life. Aye, aye, so, I think it's brilliant. So um, he moved to Memphis, and it wasn't much better from there, was it? He was like digging... Yeah, I I was doing like labour and jobs mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And then, the funny thing is though, right, I think this is pretty cool. Now, I don't know how many people list I'm assuming, right, I'm just going to assume, out of him here, that everybody who's listening to this has either heard of or watched at least one of the Blues Brothers movies, mm-hmm. right? And Matt Guitar Murphy is in both, both of them. Both of them, I. Yep. And, uh, you know, he's a Reether Franklin's husband. Aye, because he's the, uh, the cafe owner in the first aye, one. Aye, he's always getting his heat nipped. Aye, aye. Well, she's does her big... Aye. Well, aye. Only better than that. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. aye. I, I always, like, spell it wrong when I'm singing it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, mm. I don't. Right. But anyway, right. So, that was actually his best pal. <laughs> I'm being serious. No, I'm being serious. I'm being serious. It was his best pal, and uh, he didn't even play guitar at the point. No, no he didn't I actually start playing guitar till he was 21. But he was it. already best pals with like Matt Guitar Murphy. And I think that is really cool. I don't know. It's like a game. It's like a community, like a massive yeah. family. Right? I mean, uh, and, and to be fair, if if anybody listened to last week's show, um, all the feedback and all the sharing and the lovely things. I mean, Donna Harula, oh, she's so cool. You know, opening for Buddy Guy and then messaging and saying, oh, he's great, he played amazing, he's 86 and he played the best I've ever seen him. And so, you know, like, we're all on the same level, even though some of us are, like, headlining stadiums, mm-hmm. some of us are doing radio shows, we're all in the same kind of group of folk. And it's really cool, you know, and I think that he's a testament to that as well because he was a massive help for us, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Maybe when Kevin got in touch with us with the Delmark stuff. Aye, because he's that just like, him. get yeah. them my music. Aye. aye. I know, I know. <laughs> just sitting there like, whoa. <laughs> I know, I know, aye. Yes, All do that. <laughs> aye, yes. <laughs> All fluttery and that. Aye. Still fluttering and thinking about it, actually. It's crazy. So, um, so I think, um, in general, I think he, he's delivered a lot to, to blues music in general. And he's, he does change up, you know. He's played with, he's one of the only guys that's played with the All Three Kings. Freddie, Albert and BB. Mm-hmm. Which is amazing. Mm-hmm. Don't say that. <laughs> Nathan didn't get it. That was no. That's why I came in. And Fiona <laughs> reckons. So, just for anybody who's wondering, I said he's the only, he's the only blues guy who's played. Well, you just said he's the only guy that's played with the three kings. Yeah, and then uh, you went like apart from Jesus. <laughs> I mean, really, what are you up against, eh? So, <laughs> right, just ignore her if she says anything like that. I'll make sure you're not drinking your water when I do. That's that's a can of Stella. Hen. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's fizzy water. You're on a health kick. New year, new you. Remember? Aye, oh aye, aye, aye. It's working. It's look, just got look, I've got a body of an Adonis. Aye, I agree. Uh, anyway, 
So, so yeah, so he's done. He's done a lot of stuff. He comes from a musical family, and and he's kind of carried that on, you know. And I think the fact that he got an opportunity to move to Chicago and just took it. Aye, it was his uncle, wasn't it? Aye, that's uncle right. Yeah, and, and he said that he was coming to visit, so he went back. See, you, see me. I'm like a sponge. See when you tell yep. me things, I remember it. All. Just remember it. Unless it's <laughs> cook the dinner. Or t- I told you Nathan takes a bin. <laughs> <laughs> also cooking the dinner actually. So, um, but he went back to Mississippi and from there moved to Chicago. Yep. With yeah. his uncle. That is, a, that is a funny word to say. Name to say. I think. Do you not think? Chicago. Aye. See your. Was it her? Fir- no, was it was it our second show? It was the one I was drunk and I tried to say Chicago Shuffle. Uh, I went sh- yeah. sh- I mean, he didn't really. It was just I don't think anybody else noticed. I just I, I don't know. I, I, I know for a fact a few a few <laughs> folk get my work noticed. Like. Chicago. <laughs> Chicago Shuffle. <laughs> so so anyway, so he was born in Holly Springs. He's done all this moving around. Comes from this uh, generally quite musical background. You know, his his dad Sam, I think his name was. I, I don't want to quote that right, but I think Sam was his father's name. And he was a harp player, but not professionally, you know, so it was like a very much, kind of like the, the culture that my family come from, you know, mm-hmm. like a very hard-working kind of, you know, close-knit family, but, you know, not much opportunity, right? Aye, so like, so if, well, not really because you are a professional musician, but I, imagine I played guitar, <laughs> if you will, for a moment. So when we when we go to parties, that's our thing, isn't it? You yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's so pretty much what his dad did, played at parties and stuff. Yeah, yeah. aye, so yeah, pretty much. And, it, and you know, his, um, his brother, actually, this is a crazy thing, mm-hmm. his brother played with, um, I, I believe his brother's name is Mac, you know, like I said, I'm trying to remember everything, I know about the guy on the spot here, so g- give me give me peace if it's wrong, right? Mm-hmm. But, um, so his brother played with, um, Magic Sam, who is somebody that he also played with, you know, I and guess they, mo- they moved to Chicago. It was his neighbour, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, again, this f- whole family is just like growing and spreading, and it's really, really. No. Eh? So but when he went, he, he wasn't. <coughs> he didn't get into music though at first, did he? he was a well, yeah, he's a welder. A welder, I think. Oh, I a welder. You know, that's what my dad did. Was it? Mm-hmm. Just started through it. <laughs> right. No, no, it's pretty cool. I mean, I wish I had done something other than butchering, to be honest. Oh no, I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, no yeah, I never liked the guy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, fantastic. No. And the freezer full. So a lot of folk don't realise anyway. Right? So his real name is actually um, James Earl Thompson. I know now. <laughs> Right, and when, you, when you <laughs> aye, so it's the alliteration thing, though. It's a great artist's name. Aye, so it's like aye, Bobby Rush, yeah. Jimmy Johnson, you know, that kind mm-hmm. of thing, yeah. You, you get me? So, um, so Jimmy Johnson, his name actually is, um, real name, it's uh, James Thompson. And he comes from, I think it's 10 siblings or something like that. He was, uh, no, 11. He's got an older sister, and he's the oldest boy. He was the second born. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. So, I mean, like, you know. Plenty of fighting at the dinner table and that. Can you imagine? Oh, what? No. No. I mean, that would be hard, eh? It would be hard, like, absolutely. So, uh, apart from that, his, his main influences as well. Now, I don't know if, if you've been on his website, hen, but see if you go on his website, mm-hmm. you'll see that uh, he's got a wee testament to Otis Rush. Because right. that was one of his biggest influences. That's who we've got next, eh? Um, aye, aye. Well, that was why I suggested Fire in there, because... You know, Otis Rush was a massive part in his ability, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, he absorbed his playing and, and even though, like he says, a lot of the young guys don't really appreciate who Otis Rush was or to him still is, but he played an integral part of that electric blues sound for him and so did Buddy Guy. And Buddy Guy and Jimmy Johnson are still playing at that age. I mean, Donald was saying that he's 86, you know, it's and the best and he's and ever I, I seen I him play so <laughs> at 86. And I think that's really cool. I mean, this is the same guy playing in his own club, you know, on a, on a weekend mm-hmm. after playing for the pres- president of the United States. I mean, the guy is obviously right down to earth, mm-hmm. you know. Aye. So. So did he ever get to like play with Otis Rush? Um, I don't. Bl- I, I don't. I don't believe he he, he did. Any, no, it's just, the, I don't know. I don't know. Why. Anyway, you're going to be listening I'll to tell it. Okay, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm just going to find right out because I can't answer that. Aye, aye, I tell you what, they used to play pool together. <gasps> Can you imagine that? Aye, I believe and, 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 and they played in them. Japan together as well. Cool. So ah. that, that's pretty cool, aye. So we've got Otis Rush with Gambler's Blues. 
Let's have it. Let's have it. Enjoy.
I first met you You look so fine I said then baby Yes I did now I'm gonna make you mine Just give me love Awesome. And uh, see you were chair dancing too. Yep, yep. It's a good job as no I've webcam just, in I've here. just been reading a wee bit on that story and it's quite sad. Sorry. I know. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to be you know, all tied up elsewhere, but so so the day we're talking about Jimmy Johnson. Yes, we are. And um but so his real name, just to just to recap, is mm-hmm. actually James Thompson. James Earl Thompson. Yep, and his his brother so um actually took the name first. I he's, he, a soul, he he's a soul musician, actually, ah, yes, to be fair. He was a, a f- already a famous... So, aye, aye, that's right. Aye, so there's been a bit of crossover there, like, which kind of explains, you know, during the late 60s and whatnot, when um, Jimmy Johnson had that kind of more... Um, soul kind of... Aye, it was like a almost Motown guitar sound, mm-hmm. you know, it was uh, really nice, eh? But that's... And his voice, <coughs> his voice quite suits he's got great, well. He's got a great <laughs> voice, eh? But, I mean, I, I believe that... When he was at um, he was at school in the gymnasium, they, uh, I think they had a piano, and he just used to batter out like bits of the piano, you know, and just practice away and learn and learn and learn. Mm-hmm. And I believe that on the album, every day of your life, he actually plays piano in one of the songs. All oh, right, cool. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's really, really talented, honestly. See, that's what some people have all the talent. That's why I can't a, play. <laughs> there was a quote I saw actually. Um, who was it that shared it? It was Errol Thomas. Errol Thomas shared it. And it said, um, Oh, when I go to heaven, if I die and go to heaven, and God asks me, um, What did you do with your talent? He says, I used everything you gave me. You know, he wanted to go. You know, that's pretty mm-hmm. cool. You know, it's quite a, it was a deep message in that, you know. Aye. Because you are given something. You know, people people need to find their purpose. And I, I believe to myself that everybody's got one. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, this guy we were talking about today, Jimmy Johnson, I mean, he, honestly, look at the stuff he's done, man. Honestly, at nine year old, he's worked harder than most guys my age. I know. At nine year old, you know, he looked after a mule who then in turn looked after him. I know, it's so cute. I know, it's quite sad, you know, he wrote a song about it um, called May, actually. And, um, you know, so he's done all this hard work and then he's prevailed to become this amazing musician. You know, and not just amazing musician, but, like, influential amazing, you know? Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm caught up in it. <laughs> in the mule, right? Oh, you still think <laughs> I'm right, still away at the mule. But, but, he's the, but the cool thing, right, so the cool thing, apart from the fact that he's brilliant and, and he's humble, right, let's talk about the fact that he's played with all three of the kings. Mm-hmm. Freddie King, mm-hmm. Albert King, and B.B. King. But the cool thing is, it, the B.B. King song... Isn't it a BB King song? It was yeah. actually a Jimmy Johnson song. He got to number sixteen in the Billboard charts, and then BB King covered it. Don't answer the the, yeah, it was don't answer the door, and that was actually a Jimmy Johnson song. So, uh-huh. so which is really really cool. I right. know. But I think my favourite King of the lot has got to be Freddie, not Little Freddie, the Mississippi guy, the Big Freddie. Big Freddie. No, no, oh, it's cause I, know, it's no, no, no. I know. We were talking about this yesterday. Didn't Although we? I <laughs> thought that um, Little Freddie King's dress sense was a lot cooler. You know the leopard print and white and spats and that. Oh, I amazing! I, 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 thought, <laughs> I was thinking to myself, you know, I've got that new valve amp. I, you know, the leopard I, print. I, 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 I thought I'm going to get a pair of them. I tell you what, leave it with me. Get we get the material. I could uh, I could make. Uh, I you, could where are you going to have a leopard in this weather? It's fine. In Scotland. It's fine. That's what we've got Nathan for. <laughs> but, uh, really, he can't, can't e- he can't even hunt a Russell's burger out the fridge. Saying <laughs> he's here for the bins, right? I wait till I tell you all, so you're all aware of what we have to put up with in here. So there we are, right? It's Christmas. Now, what happens when you have children at Christmas? There's a lot of paper. It's yep. okay because it'll all go in the recycling bin, which goes out on the Friday following. Does he put the bin out? No. no. Are we now drowning in paper? Yes. I've wallpapered with cornflake boxes and everything. <laughs> I know, I know. I quite like the look, though. Uh, I like you the know. rice crispy room better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job it's not fresh. Although, I don't, I don't understand why we've got wrapping paper on the ceiling in the study. Well, you see. Just in the middle. How did I that get up there? <laughs> I just what are you even up to? <laughs> Staple gun. Have you had a man round? <laughs> <laughs> He's left his wrapping paper on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, hmm. How do you explain that? Hmm, strange. It was Nathan. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> aye. Aye, he was putting them in. Uh, there's a gator on the ceiling. Yep. I keep pointing that out to you every time yeah, I'm in here. I'm yep. proud of it, I'm proud of it. After a high weekend, there's usually a gator on the floor as well. <laughs> 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 to be fair. Um, so, I... <clears throat> so, he, his first... Um, his first proper uh, solo album was not actually... On um, MCM until he was forty nine or fifty. Oh, there's hope for me yet. <laughs> aye, aye, absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, like he started doing heavy, heavy hits, you know. But I mean, it's been quite late on. Mm-hmm. You know, he wasn't he wasn't overly fortunate, you know, with handouts and and leg ups, you know. See, we I think that um, <coughs> we're giving people a complete insight to our relationship, right? Because I'm just about to come right off of talking about what we're talking about and you obviously have to put up with this I'm on re- a daily basis. I'm ready. So I, I did my show um, last week on Betty White. Oh, aye, aye, I know. <sighs> so gutted. Anyway, a lot of people don't know who she is here. I, I no, was no, no, don't anyway, don't, don't no, but that's, where, that's where I'm going, right. So, but what I discovered was that Estelle Getty that plays Sophia Petrillo she only became famous in her 50s. So when you're watching the Golden Girls um, with Betty White and all that, right, and Sophia's quick-witted and, you know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and as an actress, you think she must be brilliant, right? I mean, she is. I don't mean she wasn't. But what you don't know is, is she was so new to it, she was terrified because she's working with these people that have yeah, been... I mean, Betty White it. had had 70 no. years in show business, you know? And, uh, and she was brand new. For the whole thing, so she was like, she'd freeze and forget sh- me. She was me, forget what she was trying to say. And I, I think and I, I, I can, I kind of relate to that sometimes because, um, I mean, you know, I know it's not exactly the same, but I remember when, uh, when we first took um, that support slot um, with the Blind Lemon Gators for Josh Smith, you know, 
if you Google Josh Smith, he is now, they call him Guitars Aaron for a reason, right? Uh. He is an absolute demon blues player, right? Very, very talented. He's got, uh, works alongside, um, that was me Googling. All right, sorry. Works alongside uh, Joe Bonamassa, record mm. producing and whatnot, right? And we got the support slot for him. And I tell you what, even though we were on, a, you know, a different time mm -hmm. before him, the nerves are unreal because somebody that stature might see you playing and you, and you know yourself that you're not him. No. And it, it's, it's frightening. It's very, very frightening. It doesn't matter how good you are and on how different my style of playing is. It right. didn't matter because it's still frightening to think that, you know, like, he's he's taking out of his stride. It's just another gig to him. You know, he's so natural. But it's a big deal. I mean, he probably gets nervous. Know, I was going to say, because I would never have thought it. You always seem very... Um, Confident and but you I think, know, I think that's I'm terrified of my own shadow. I'm like, oh, somebody's looking at me. But I think that's but it. I think that's um, I think that's a confidence that um, that is very much um necessary, but also learned because it wasn't always like that mm -hmm. for anybody. Do you know what I mean? It's not like there's nobody in the world just coming. I mean, Robert Johnson's a great example. He was murdered apparently. Son House said that he would like give him a row and tell him to get out the road and do you know what I mean? He mm -hmm. had this confidence already before he had the ability. Right. Do you know he done it the other way around? Whereas Son mm -hmm. House whereas Son House used to just get bluttered. <laughs> 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 you know? uh, but yeah, so well I feel better now because obviously I just get drunk and you'll be fine. <laughs> no, it makes it worse. It, do, it does for me, yeah. See, yeah. like people going, oh, just get up and do a song on a karaoke. Do it once and you'll be fine. Have another drink. See, the the more I would drink, the less aye, likely that I was getting up to do that karaoke. Sh okay. Sweet home Chicago. I know, I'd be like, I'd, I'd be like no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I get you, I get you. Um, so but, um, but I mean, there's a lot, of, obviously, the, to be fair though, we were watching that thing the other night and uh, seeing how like, Howlin' Wolf would actually ban his band from drinking during a gig, mm -hmm. but then buy all the drinks for them after it. Aye. So I mean, I could probably go off a couple of hours no drinking like for the mm -hmm. sake of getting blue turned out somebody else's somebody expense. Else's money, aye. <laughs> but um, I bet he also didn't he didn't allow people to interrupt his performance. Oh, it was uh, see when Sun House did that. Aye, it was <laughs> and really he's like that. <laughs> oh, he's got evil in his heart and he's, he's obviously <laughs> got the blues because look what you've done in your life, you've whiskied it. <laughs> <laughs> Some people got the blues but they just can't play it. <laughs> to <laughs> totally yeah. trolled him. <laughs> yeah, he's right his face in a while. Aye, absolutely. So, so our next song is A King. Aye, yep, yep. <laughs> Freddie King going down. Is this um, your favourite king? It's my, uh, it's my favourite king and it's also my favourite Freddie King song. Oh, cool. So this is pretty cool. And I think, like I said, I mean... Jimmy Johnson's been really, really good to us, and I think, mm -hmm. you know, in the back of saying we're going to play somebody else's music here, also make sure you check the guy out, you know, Jimmy Johnson, I mean, because he's got aye, a lot to offer, he's aye, still doing live streams, 93, mm -hmm. this guy is, is is a heavy hitter at 93, you know, I know. does not understand in his way, and, you know, you can learn something for that, even if you don't like his music, do you know what I mean, aye. just to watch him perform is amazing. But we've still got um, a few more from him as well coming up. So what we're doing is uh, peppering the show with people yeah. that he's played with. Or inspired him, yeah. or, or people that he has inspired. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's a couple of there's a cool couple ones of coming up. On, yeah. So enjoy this, the Gator's favourite.
Hi, this is Johnny Bergen on Delmark Records out of Chicago, Illinois. You're listening to Galti and the Gators Blues and New Show from Scotland. Keep on listening to the blues. voice clip was brilliant I, I know, w- I I know. Play it again, pretty much just wrote a song for us just for the radio so that was Johnny Bergen just in case you didn't can I not put it on again no, I'm like, I'll put it on <laughs> so jo- Johnny Bergen is, is oh, obviously as you heard a Delmark artist mm-hmm. much like Jimmy Johnson right? and the reason I suggested putting it on is because I, it's a kind of testament to the, 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 the kind of community do mm-hmm. you know what I mean mm-hmm. and the stature of the people that are on there they don't really sign anybody. You have to be absolute top shelf, amazing to get to get on that record label. And they obviously think that of us. That's why they say this the clips. I tell you what, I well, no, I don't know. About that. Like, they, they probably saw you and thought she's banging, <laughs> right? And and you know, uh-huh. no, no. All jokes, all jokes. 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 No, I'm only joking. So, I, I, so, th- like I said, th- they're all really selfless, you know. And I think, you know, let's not forget that we're in the middle of a pandemic, you know. We're in the middle of a pandemic, and at the end of the day, regardless of how famous you are, how much money you were making before it, 
everybody's took a hit of some sort and everybody's had to stand back, take stock and think, what am I doing with my life at the moment? you know at the moment mm-hmm. and some people I'll tell you I'm going to name a few of them and they're well worth watching out for so you've got your man himself Jimmy Johnson mm-hmm. John Primer he's another guy mm-hmm. absolutely world class like but still knocking it out of the park live streaming you know mm-hmm. Martin McNeil absolutely aye he's amazing you know Dave Arcari the Avi Graves band Dave, all these Dave guys Ar- Dave Arcari he's, a, <laughs> he's so amazing <laughs> he dropped he's his pizza the other night <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's the best pizza they've ever made, hey, and it's now lying <laughs> somewhere and on and the it floor. Went, as it does, topping first on a, oh, de- on I a deck. I know, <laughs> I know. I, I was actually raging for him. <laughs> I didn't mean it in tears, I think. And I can't tell you the name of the cat that was like, yes, dinner's came early because it's got a bit of a sweaty word in it. Oh, is it? <laughs> for? Mm-hmm. Aye, aye. But uh, yes, he's, oh, I just, I love his updates, they're brilliant. I know, honestly. I know. But, uh, you know, it's, like I said, I mean, it's just normal guys. Aye, yeah. aye, aye. I it's mean, great. even Michael Messer is the same, it sound mm-hmm. as it, mm-hmm. you know. So I think this whole community, and we were just talking about, actually, weren't we, um, how everybody's got this kind of stigma attached to um, what blues music is, what it sounds like in their head, mm-hmm. just because they hear that one word blues mm-hmm. you know and they think they've already got this whole idea of what it is and I think that's because deep down it's a feeling right mm-hmm. and I think because it's a feeling they can relate to a feeling and they relate that feeling to that music and I think that's why it works like that I mean I don't know I'm not a psychologist and I'm not a, I'm not an all CNI but I think that makes the most sense right and um, at the end of the day see when you actually look at some some of the things that, that go on and from who they come from so Jimmy Johnson has come from a farming family, you know, working really hard at nine year old, you know, missing out in school because he had to work, mm-hmm. you know, you know, ten, you know, ten or eleven siblings, you know, you know, a, 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 you know, a, mm-hmm. a, a struggle for a life, right? Mm-hmm. And look at everything he's achieved. I know. Do you know what I mean? And it, it's like there's loads of stories like that. Whether it be, uh, whether it be, you know, somebody like get releasing an album for the first time you know like the fact that you know it's always you know they're doing it you know Aye. and and everybody in that genre seems to be proud of them for it as opposed to like in the pop industry where they're, everybody's trying to head cut you know I was talking I don't, to I don't like uh, that you know no but I know I was talking to um, one of our mutual friends who is older and releasing music and um, and he he has a kind of dancey bluesy song Cat Roof Blues I think it's called that's oh, just yeah, come yeah. out Rob G Nichols yeah, yeah. and um, so his music's more towards television and movies but he's older and he's when a, he's he works hard as well da- yeah, he, he, he works really hard and he's very respectful and he's and that's equally connected in the community yeah, and that's what he was saying like it's ridiculous because um, if you know more people realise that by helping each other they're helping the whole industry. Absolutely, and you know what? Dave Arcari said something to me a while ago um, about like that, that whole um, like synchronized help. Mm-hmm. People overlooked the fact that when C6 Steve got mega famous worldwide, it helped everybody in the blues community. Everybody, mm-hmm. everybody who put a cigar box in their bedroom for for weeks or months before was then looked at. Oh wow, you can do that. I, uh, you know, the guy's probably thinking, well, I've always done it in front of you, but you always thought it was stupid. But because it's been blown up by this one guy, it's helped everybody. And if everybody had, you know, the mindset to make that happen, like, like, you know, specifically on purpose, mm-hmm. you know, if they consciously made a decision to, to, to share that help, you know, then I think um, everybody would thrive a, a lot more from it, you know. Aye, absolutely. So, uh, sorry about the preacher. there. So right, it's better than the one that I had lined up. <laughs> I, I was going, I I was going down I the Rufus Thomas walking the dog avenue. <laughs> I'll I tell you what, hey, that's another thing that's going to be happening too. I know. I've got an email about his daughter. Uh, I love that song though. I know. I, I see every time I go to, <laughs> I have to go to let the dog out, that's why I start singing Sorry, I yeah. And I like you know, th- there's a lot of, I'll tell you what, so if if this guy at 93, we, we you know, like, um, you know, not not as fit as he used to be, right? Mm-hmm. Ninety three year old who is, he's still there, doing live streams. You know, absolutely you know, minimum. You know, you know ability to 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 get about and mm-hmm. whatnot. He's still doing it, right? That surely shows. You know, shows the kind of. You know. The, Aye, I think it also shows, shows that absolute minerals. 
Oh, that, aye, but you know, I think it's also something that people should take comfort from and inspiration from. You know, so look what he's done, look where he came from, look what he managed to do, look what he's still doing, and you know, you get people that are moaning about stupid nonsense that have the ability to change it, but just want somebody else. Yeah, to Yeah, it's a lot it. easier to 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 believe to yourself that the world owes you something. Owes you a favour, yeah. When in actual fact. Nobody is doing nothing. No. Nobody is doing nothing, and I think, I think that um, it is a community of people in a in a genre based on what er, was originally a struggle. Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, fair enough, right? Um, no, nobody can ever compare anything that we go through now to what brought this music to the Western world, right? Nobody. Like, it's just the stuff that that happened to, to, to people and to families and to communities and to cultures. Mm-hmm. Complete cultures actually mm-hmm. sometimes mm-hmm. wiped out. Um, is absolutely horrendous, and and y- you could never really anything that we. I mean, Eric Clapton tried, but th- that just shows <laughs> you the that just shows you the, the integrity of that guy. So right, I'm going to stop hating on him now. <laughs> but uh, honestly, At oh my god, no, but, no, but I mean, oh my god, you know, but it has god. to be done. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, so nothing can ever be compared to that, right? But at the same time, Bobby Rush makes a good point. He says it is a feeling, and uh, even though they can't. Uh, relate to the struggle that we had young guys do still have that same feeling so mm-hmm. they should have some appreciation for for the music that we've produced because they're just as able to produce it if they so wish mm-hmm. and it's true but it'd be like you know he talks about like um gang warfare or mm-hmm. or um you know or, or women you know everybody says the blues isn't women you know mm-hmm. like son house said that the blues is just a female <laughs> 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 you know? and you know i, I get his point like yeah I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, sorry, so, ow, ow, <laughs> stop, stop it, so, I'm sorry, help, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but it's true though, eh? so everybody, everybody does have the blues at some point in their life, and, and Rufus Thomas is a perfect, you know, he says, oh, Jake, because, you ain't just because you're white, and you're, you're, you come home, and your two-car garage is empty, <laughs> and your wife went away with the, the postman, and the, and the line was lifted off the flare, and there's nothing left in your house, and you're trying to tell you, because you're white, you don't have the blues, <laughs> 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 you know, so, it, there is a lot of people who re- realise, as well, on a grander scale, that, you know, it is that small feeling, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I think that, Anybody who creates on the back of that creates something positive. It's not negative. It's not the feeling that gave them the the need to create that that is that you harbour. It's the, it's the positivity that it brings. Aye, you know, the, it's the, the, the blues music. is is the bit that you you do to, to get, get over, over it. It's the, the medicine. Uh, yeah. It's the medicine. When you write a blues song about something, then in my opinion, that's you. Um, Showing people the certificate of you completing that part of your life. Yeah, because not all of them are all about the situation it, it can be about the after part you know absolutely aye absolutely mm-hmm. no absolutely and as we were saying i defy anybody to listen to it and not want to move there's you know yeah like aye aye absolutely um like move about move not move <laughs> aye, aye not move house or move out country <laughs> job no but dance you know or move your body even if you're just sitting yeah. tapping or you know as i i am prone to do um but yeah it's you know it is it's 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 got that beat. It's got I, that I just think I, I just think the fact as well. You know, this whole show based around this guy who, who is still proving to people all over the world that that whether it be health, age, um, upbringing, uh, where you were born, or or what, what you've done in between, or how many family members, or how much money. Aye, mm-hmm. it doesn't. <laughs> and see if you want it, mm-hmm. it's there for taking. Mm-hmm. And and f- you know, I, mean, I actually wrote a poem about him. You did. And it's fantastic. Actually, you should read it out before no, we finish. No, right, no, okay. no. I mm-hmm. might, I might, I might, I might. I'll I might, because it... Because it uh. Uh, but what I was going to say was, is he feels like part of the family, doesn't he? He feels like you uh, yeah, know him. Yeah, yeah, aye. And the fact that um, the fact that you were just sitting there, you know, watching his show, and and I was like, look, we've just started this podcast, and, and I've loved your music for, like, the best part of my life. Um, is there any way we can use your music? Is that okay? You know, to be mm-hmm. respectful. Mm-hmm. Like, and uh, he's like, ah, I'm going to read this one out. And uh, he's like, ah, make sure that that boy gets gets all of my music. And then two days later, a guy from Delmark's like, ah, look, 
I've been told under no <laughs> certain <laughs> circumstances should you not get Del Mark's music. I know. And it's just I, I can't even thank him enough for that. You and know, seeing that, 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 seeing that, that turn show, up and the, oh. I know, and that brought this show about because I've got a lot to be grateful for her and I would like him to know that I'm grateful for it. You know, so, and his music. And that that being said, I think we should put on some of your music, you know. Yeah, so we've got um In any order, but I, I tell you what, the first one's amazing. And it's true as well. Better when it's wet. Yeah. I, I just did a one and a half mile walk to the shop in the rain. I disagree. <laughs> 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 it's moving all the way, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I can gather <laughs> the river. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the shower. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then I need you so bad. And uh, after that, we have another Otis Rush and... Albert King, born under a bad sign. I love that. Chin, oh. chin, no, no, no. Oh, I'm all excited. See, so, so he's my favourite king. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I don't know. BB King. Oh, it's hard, eh? It's hard. Uh, just take all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to put some on now. Well, Same well, we <laughs> we break up. <laughs> we'll do it off here. So we'll split up. <laughs> we'll split up privately, and it'll be goatee and goatee back. <laughs> Oh, uh, just, just you, you can just sit there and I'll, I'll talk to you and you can do what we do when we're not got a microphone, you know, where you just nod and look at me like, shut up. <laughs> aye, aye, <laughs> you know, like, aye. Aye, because if know. I hit you, then you'll hear it on... Aye, aye, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, aye. Put the song on, like, you mm, know. aye, go for it. Hit <laughs> me. <laughs> 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 uh, my chairs get wheels. <laughs> Yours doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know, which means I could knock you out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> like like cur- curling. curling. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. uh, no uh, Fiona's were harmed in the making of this radio show. Enjoy some Jimmy Johnson.
This is Donna Harula, and you're listening to Galti and Gators Blues and New Show in Scotland. I'm just a working man, but I stay busy every day. I'm just a
just a one man game. They're calling the West Side Spoiler. Your love will never be the same. That was genius. I love it. I like the song. I don't agree that, you know, if it wasn't for bad luck. I think we make our own luck in this world, don't you? Yeah. I'll just uh, tell you what I've seen. He gets all excited because, you know, he gets gets all these, like, rich and famous people messaging him all the time. Aye, I've just heard another one from Chicago. Um, so we've been looking at Jimmy Johnson, absolute legend of a man, still doing live streams, performing at 93 years old. I will be amazed if I could get out of my bed at 93 years old. In fact, I hope um, Mr. Gator here realises that he's going to be f- like feeding me porridge. I don't think he realised who it is that's I actually tried to add me. <laughs> it's um, it's um, Helen Wolf's. Um, <gasps> uh, aye. Daughter? Yeah. Oh my g- Oh, I'm sending her a friend request. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're going <laughs> off air. See you later. <laughs> so, um, I her Rose's daughter <laughs> just sent me because they want to do something with me. So, so that's pretty oh cool. Ma- do you know? Oh my God. Do you know I've just had like a wave butterflies and everything going on there? I know. Oh, I've had to, I've it's not even my Facebook. Like how excited I get for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm going to have to delete somebody, right? So, we're going to pick up. We're going to do a lottery right now, right? Dun, uh, dun, um, you can't. No. no, no, not that one. No, go down. Oh, no, that one. Yeah. Do I know? Right, no, don't do the, the famous A's. one. I mean, <laughs> I, I know. I didn't yeah. like her music. I only had her because she sent me a friend request. 
Aye. And she had that one good song. What one was that? Hello from the I can't. Ocean. I can't. I don't know the words to that. What? I only know the the parody version of the diet. I know. So I, I do that. Yeah. Hella cravings. And by the way, if you have not checked it out, I highly recommend you do. I can't even remember what they're called though. Is it Guinevere or something? Guinevere oh, and her husband. Know. It's that's not sweat. My body's crying. It's singing about being on the stationary bike. Oh, it's brilliant. They only run in the do's after the ice cream van, but it's to the tune of Hello. Oh, it's, it's honestly, it's so good. Anyway. Can we get on with the show now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you deleted somebody? Yeah. I'm just going to say that should be. It. Sorry. I don't even want to be this unprofessional, but this is a no, no, big deal because. Is. I'm just going to cry in a corner because. How long no, long because I think. That's, I know, and I think that I think that this wee plan of ours is really, really cool. So let's just um, go with it. Let's roll the punches. Can we do a show just about him, though? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I know, know everything about him. Everything. I know. I know. And he's really cool. He's really cool. Aye. And he had a lot of good morals. And and I loved how he, like, he always said that, he, you know, unlike the other guys in Chess Records, you know, he owned his car and the car didn't own uh, him. Like a, a you know, it was like a Pontiac saloon or something like that. Aye, but you know, I think. Aye, but it, it was just a, it was a family a, car. And it was, a, it was a heart thing. It was like a pride thing you know and do you know he's another one um, with kidney problems and having to have dialysis in his basement and he was still out gigging yeah that's right yeah yeah right up to the end honestly see solid they're all solid and they're uh, all cool and they're all sound mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, you know despite like all the wee stories that you hear they were all still very supportive of each other absolutely yeah so the our next our next guy right <laughs> our next guy that's up is a guy called Jose Ramirez mm-hmm. now he was in our new for 22 show mm-hmm. he is a massive deal in the blue scene he's a young guy and he, he was from Costa Rica I know so another like I said another kind of um, underprivileged kind of area of the world but he's come up and he's like making massive noise in the in the scene but he's also one of the guys who um, regularly brags about being able to have um, traded licks with Jimmy Johnson, and so that's why that's why we picked him. Eh? Aye, aye, aye. Because yeah, I thought it was pretty cool that um, even though he's, he's the modern, young, um, popular dude that you know is more relevant now, like in our age group, like he's still over proud of. He's almost like you know Jimmy Johnson's like his, you know, like Otis Rush was to Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? So a, a mentor, uh, inspiration. Uh, yeah, yeah, everything. I um and and wait to hear this because I, I, all of that and he's so talented and um, there's nothing else to say. Here he is, Jose Ramirez.
The fella that you got, you don't want him no more. Don't you lie to me. Now don't you lie to me. Because it make me mad. I can eat her as a man can be. Albert King, I yep. get evil because and that was that was amazing. Because, because you love me, you let me put an extra one on. I know, I know. Albert King was pretty cool, like to be fair. I know, but it wasn't supposed to. I be remember, I it. remember him watching a thing. Actually, he was sitting talking to Stevie Ray Vaughan. Stevie Ray Vaughan is at the height of his career at this point, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely amazing. Can play so well. He's so popular. He's got this outfit. He's got the whole thing going the on. Big tail and all yeah, that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then. Albert King sitting in his light blue, sharp as anything zoot suit, big pointy collar, and his flying V guitar going like that. As long as you don't get too carried away, my man, you'll be fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is like Albert King is so cool. He's <laughs> like, so cool. Like, oh, yeah. I know. You know yeah. what I mean? So, so um, yes, that wasn't supposed to be on, but yeah. I, but as per usual, you know, Fiona does this thing where she comes across as very sweet, and then she'll go, "Oh, we could, maybe you know, I could." Uh, and then off air she'll put that Actually, Look, that's we're, putting it, we're putting it on right and then we'll make this story up that you said <laughs> it was alright because you love me and even though I've never said that <laughs> everybody now believes it because you went oh just because you love me so much you let me put another song that I like on I said that isn't fair can I play this I'm pretty sure this is some kind of abuse but I'm not sure <laughs> which kind it is oh it's or physical now it's physical now sorry <laughs> Uh, Go on, we'll do that again then, sorry. I asked you and you said, yeah, of course, sweetheart. Stop being mean to me. But what? You just hit me twice. There's a van well, pulled up. There's a van pulled up. Yeah, it's a police van, it's a police van. <laughs> don't it is. Well, where's the blue light then? Where's the blue light? <laughs> is that? That's a blue light. Uh, what? So, it's been nice knowing you. Um, <laughs> so, we'll see you. We might get bail. <laughs> <laughs> I do. So. Right, we might not. <laughs> Uh, we've, got, we've got Buddy Guy on next. I um, tell oh, you. and I tell you what, I snuck in a wee BB King as well. We put Did two you? kings on. Did three you? for the price of one. You mean three? There three kings. Two. There was two. We had Freddie King too. Ah, but no back to back. Like, no, look, I mean, Freddie King's up next after I Buddy Guy. Aye, I know, but I mean, 
all like, the kings. Three kings. Oh, we had all the kings, eh? Aye, but I meant back to back. There was a oh, BB sorry. and Amy Albert. We smooshed in together. See? Anyway. Right, so anyway, Fiona's sober, <laughs> right? And um, and this is this mm-hmm. is as good as it gets, I'm afraid, guys. But you know what? Like, I'm pretty cool, so stick around for that. I think that um, she's got a nicer voice. At the end of this, people are going to be like bringing you trophies and stuff. I think you'll get like awards. Yeah. I like, don't know if there is. I've been inducted to the Fiona Galt Handling Hall of Fame. <laughs> Honestly, it's a, wee shame. it's a wee shame. The Perseverance Hall of Fame. <laughs> Do you see when I go? Can I ask you something? Do you internally cry? No, it's more of a like, where can I jump? <laughs> I mean, in fact, I was thinking about going to the walk there with some bricks, you know, and going for a swim, knowing that I've found well, I can't swim. <laughs> you can't swim. <laughs> and then I'll have to jump in and save you. No, I I don't, no, don't, don't, <laughs> no, don't, 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 no, this is the one time I don't want you to do that. Aww. Hey, but. No, I honestly, mean, I must do your nothing, so I ask you all sorts no, of No, 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 I, no, I um, love you the way you are, hen. So mostly. Um, <laughs> so buddy guy, that's yeah, it. Yeah, buddy guy. So buddy guy is um, one of these guys who um, definitely inspired Jimmy Johnson, right? But also made a very, very massive mark on uh, on the blues scene in the modern time as well. He come from that same kind of struggle. He, you know, and in fact, when he met Muddy Waters, you know, he, he was struggling, and you know, it's like, you know, he had nothing to eat and everything else, and he said, and Muddy Waters was like, "You starving?" He says, "No, if you're Muddy Waters, I'm not." Mm-hmm. You know, you know, and and I think that that whole atmosphere and that character and personality and, and ability spilled out onto guys like Jimmy Johnson who were coming up later on, and you know, and I think that that this particular song is an absolute belter mm-hmm. and exactly says. This song is a message from me to Jimmy Johnson because he was born to do that. Yeah, absolutely. So, so get on then. I'm playing it. I was born in Louisiana. And at the age of two. My mama told my papa Our little boy has got the blues. I grew up real fast And I've traveled very far One damn thing for sure I was born and played a guitar And uh, I got a reputation And everybody knows my name I was born to play the guitar People, I got blues running through my veins Women in Chicago They love me to the bone But my love for my guitar Keep me far Away from home, I got a reputation. Oh, everybody knows my name. Yeah, I was born to play my guitar. I got the blues running through my veins.
got six strings loaded on my bad machine. Show me the money, and I'll make this damn thing scream. I'm gonna keep on playing, and all my dying day, a polka dot guitar will be rusting on my grave. I got this young reputation, and everybody knows my name. But a guy that is. You know I was born to play this shell guitar. I got the blues running through my veins. Jump in, my baby showed up and said, I will tell you when. Well, I'm told on, I'm almost level with the ground. Oh, I feel like this when my baby can be found. I love you, baby, with all my heart and soul. A love like mine will never grow old. I love you in the morning and in the evening too. But every time you leave me, I get mad with you. Well, I'm told on. I'm almost level with the ground. Oh, I feel like this when my baby can be found. A love like mine is out of sight. I lie for you if you want me to. I really don't believe your love is true. Well, I'm told out. I'm almost level with the ground. Oh, I feel like this when my baby can't be found. Well, I'm told out. I'm almost level. Hi. Hi, 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 hi. I think I was like ranting there, and then you're like, the mic's on. It's like, it's fine. It's, everything I'm saying is true. Yes, but not in that colour of language. <laughs> it's not. Okay, Doc, I get your point. So, what are we doing? Right, well, I wanted to talk more about. Right, actually, it's not up to me. It's, it's our show, and we're equal, and I don't like getting hit, so let's go. Are we equal? Right. I don't. You seem to think well, of it. That's what you do so often. It's a job that you're with me, then, because I, I don't do that. Uh, okay. Anyway. Um, <laughs> right, jokes I so, so we were talking about um, Jimmy Johnson and how yeah. it was later on in his career that he, you know, yeah, yeah, things took yeah, off him. So it, it was 50. Yeah, it was 50. Aye. Yeah. Um, and it was his first solo material. Yeah, yep. And his first record label, I believe, was MCM. Now, I don't, I don't quote me on this, like, because, like I said, my memory is, is lacking at the weekend, but... Um, you know, I would definitely say that uh, Sill, I think, was an alligator record. I think I don't know. I, I think Jimmy Johnson had a song on alligator as well. Mm. 
He's okay. not always been Delmark. He's definitely been MCM. I think that was his first release. But anyway, regardless, um, he's made a massive mark on the Chicago blues scene, mm-hmm. you know. And and he's also been one of these guys who's always been evolving and and growing, and you know. And Aye, I think that's amazing. I think that's amazing. Uh, what we were saying about his um, music kind of veering more towards soul in the like sixties, and then and then as time went on, it, it kind of developed more into a bit of R and B flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is, uh, and that's that's sustainability, isn't it? Being able to absolutely, just yep. I mean, there's a lot of bands in the world that have managed to do that kind of thing, coming from a grassroots kind of feeling, like the Red Hot Chili Peppers just started to do, you know, proper brass section funk stuff, mm-hmm. and then gradually, like, molded herself, and, and but still. Still, um, true still, to their own aye, still, aye, aye. still, still comfortable enough to to produce it properly, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think he's a brilliant monument of that, you know. Honestly, I, I, I can't say enough good about the guy. Well, but, but I do think we need to address one one small thing about him, mm-hmm. and that's his health at the moment. Yeah, you know. So, I so mean. if everybody who's listening could just keep him in your thoughts just now, he was taken into hospital with um, he'd had a stroke and pneumonia. And um, and it was a wee bit of a rocky road, wasn't it, for him? The yeah, updates that we've yeah. seen. But all being well, he's going to get home, um, and hopefully, yeah, I don't flourish know if more. Home. Yeah, I don't we don't know. We don't know. I don't know if he go home. Yeah, no. Yeah. So we were, it, the the idea was that he was to be getting home, and uh, you know. Hopefully, being in a, a home environment, he doesn't like he didn't like the food and everything. No, so having his no, wife no. cooking for him, yeah, and, you know, I yeah. think hopefully, fingers crossed, because um, you know it, it would be. But I think you know, there's a lot brought us to this. Um, there's a lot brought us to this show. Eh? Uh huh. You know, Definitely. and, and um, I think uh, I think that um, it was a, a good opportunity for us to show gratitude before we were no longer, you know, no longer in a yeah. position. But you know, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Yeah, like, because you know, while you're struggling, you know, we don't want to wait till he's all better and that, and then say, by the way, <laughs> see that time you were no well, we actually really cared about you. <laughs> that doesn't have the same effect. So we just want to show like an honest gesture to towards him, um, you know. Yeah. And hopefully, you get to hear it, and we just want Jimmy Johnson to know that um, you know we're rooting for you. I and you know what I did write on my poem. You did. And, and, and I think, do you want me to read it? Can I, before you do that, I do want you to read it because it's fantastic. Um, I don't know about that. But it is, it is. And lots of people have told you you're just, you're just very similar to me. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm not as hot. I just, depends. Unless I, wear, I wear that dress. Oh, nice. I like that one. I like uh, that. Mm, g- with that the split. G- with the split mm-hmm. up the mm-hmm. bum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That um, is my bum. <laughs> 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 anyway, there oh you go. Right, oh uh, so his song I Need Some Easy Money won the award for blues single at the very first Blues Music Awards in 1980 and since then he's won Blues Music Awards in 1983 Blues Song of the Year Country Preacher and 1985 Contemporary Blues Album um, I Didn't Give a Damn If Whites Bought It with Eddie Clearwater and 1996 Comeback Blues Album I'm a Jockey Yep, so he's, he's, he's done a fair bit of business. You know, like. he came in, you know, kind of really stomped at home at fifty, and then did all that. Yeah, I, he's, he's he's definitely like a force to be reckoned with. And so I, I figured that I was I was going I don't know where I was going. I was on the train, and uh, and it was in my mind a lot because I thought he's been really good. Like even like at that age and not having to need anything from anybody, he still took the time to make sure that we got music. And and he helped us with this podcast, mm-hmm. so that made me think about what he brings to the table as a musician in his genre and and the character he is, and what he's going through at the moment. And this is the poem I wrote, right? So it says, it's, I called it Jimmy's Blues, right? Because it's you know it makes sense, eh? Mm-hmm. So just like a train, this journey's long. We're all eager for another song. We're always waiting for another chance to sing along or to have a dance. And as your fans, one thing we found is nothing beats your Chicago sound. So do not fear and do not stress. There's no doubt that you are blessed. For years we've watched you sing the blues, wondering how it feels to wear your shoes. We have faith you'll come back strong, because like this train, your journey's long. So, that's my... Oh, well, let's see, I could, I'm all wailing up. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but I mean, that's like, I was genuine, eh? Mm-hmm. You know, so, I mean, don't, you know... 
I'm not a poet, but I'm not a poet, but you know, no, it was honest. Well, I would say that your poem kind of defies what you've just said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, possibly. Yeah. You write, but we you you write songs. And yeah, I know, I know. It's the same thing. Oh, yeah, I suppose I. Anyway. And you're so highly talented. So you save yourself short a lot. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what we do. Yeah. So, um, I think you should stick on this last song. So, the last one that we're playing out with is Down in the Valley. Um, because it had to be... Uh, you know, it was a, a show all about him, so we had to make sure that plenty of his music was played uh, and inspiration of his and people that he has inspired have been throughout the whole show. I have absolutely loved this. I, I've really enjoyed it myself, and I tell you, even if you just so happen to be one of those weirdos that don't like his music, right, because you would need to be really weird not to like it, mm. right, there's absolutely no way you're going to hand on heart tell me or you that um, that his his coming up to music and doing what he loved or wanted to love and wanted to succeed at um, his story and doing that hasn't inspired you to a point because it doesn't matter what music you like he has done it from day dot from start to finish mm-hmm. and he's done it in, in, in every possible manner from working at 8 to to smashing live streams out of the park at 93. <laughs> no, no, I don't care who you are, where you are, what music you listen to. If that doesn't inspire you, then you're either deaf or blind. If his, yeah, if his story does not make you feel good inside um, and just give you that a bit of hope, regardless of what your future holds, um, be it a musical journey or somewhere else, um, you know, it's a, it's a story that I feel inspires plenty of hope for the future. Yep, yep, yep. So, uh, it'll be goodbye from us because this is our last song. Yep, yep. Catch you, Versace. And we'll catch you next week with another cracking show. Down in the Valley, Jimmy Johnson, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs>